Montreal, Canada, every Canadian's budget dream vacation. In this video, my girlfriend and I fly from Toronto to Montreal and spend four days in the city, soaking in its unique European charm, numerous festivities, and delicious food. Our trip starts early in the morning at Billy Bishop Airport. The flight from Toronto to Montreal only takes an hour, so we booked an early morning flight, so we would have plenty of time to explore the city later that day. We flew from Porter Airlines and the experience was very pleasant. Our plane landed on time at Pierre Elliott Trudeau International Airport and we took a city bus straight into downtown Montreal. We got off the bus near Station Barry UCAN because we wanted to kick off the trip at Old Montreal. However, we decided to take a little peek into Grand Bibliothèque, which is a large and modern public library in the city. If I was doing my PhD in Montreal, I could definitely see myself studying here a lot. After checking out the library, we walked towards Old Montreal, which was 20 minutes away. First, we visited Bon Secours Market. This is a public market with a variety of unique shops and cafes. We needed some breakfast after our flight and picked up a couple of pastries from this local cafe. I got the cookie and my girlfriend got the croissant. The pastries were pretty good and gave us the necessary energy to explore the neighborhood. After our food break, we decided to walk through Old Montreal. This neighborhood is filled with cobblestone streets and historical buildings. I honestly felt like I was taking a walk back in time through Europe. There are a ton of restaurants with great patios, little cafes, and gift shops. Old Montreal is also right next to the St. Lawrence River. We walked by a bunch of food trucks selling tasty treats as well as this huge ferris wheel located off the mainland. We decided not to ride the ferris wheel because Montreal was going through a heat wave when we visited and we felt like sitting in the ride would be pretty suffocating. Now this was my favorite street in Old Montreal. It was located on the side of Place Jacques Cartier and it was filled with arching wooden branches and red flowers. A very pretty street indeed. Since it was so hot, we decided to get an ice cream from La Duperie which has a few locations across Montreal. They specialize in ice cream dipped in different flavors. We went with the vanilla ice cream cone dipped in lemon. Personally, I didn't think the ice cream tasted that great and probably wouldn't recommend it to anyone else. When you are in Old Montreal, you have to visit the Notre Dame Basilica. It is one of the most famous churches in Canada and it has an incredible view inside. You do need to purchase tickets to go in and I would recommend purchasing your tickets on your phone instead of waiting for the line outside. In addition to this main section, there is a section called Notre Dame du Sacre Cœur Chapel de Cœur. If you walk past the left side of the main stage, you'll see the entrance to this section. Unfortunately, you can't film in here, but this photo was taken from their website so you have an idea of what the view is. After the church, we were getting really thirsty so we headed to Crew Collective and Cafe, which is located a few blocks from the Basilica. This cafe is a co-working space that offers coffee, different types of drinks, and sandwiches. What makes it really unique is that inside the cafe it looks like a cathedral. This place was extremely busy and we grabbed an ice latte and decided to chill for a little bit to recharge. After finishing our drink, our last destination in Old Montreal was to check out this really aesthetic indoor water fountain at the World Trade Center. For lunch, we decided to take the subway to Le Plateau, a distinct neighborhood in the city, to get some poutine. The subway system in Montreal was extremely reliable and the stations were really clean. Please take some notes, TGC. We got a three-day pass which had unlimited access to transit in the city. It was the perfect and cheapest way to get around. We decided to grab poutine at Patati Patata. This little dive-in restaurant offers a wide range of affordable and classic comfort foods such as poutine, burgers, and sandwiches. It has a rustic diner atmosphere which I really wanted to experience in the city. We both got a Coke Zero and a classic poutine with french fries cheese curds and gravy. The poutine was amazing. The cheese curds were squeaky, gravy was rich, and the fries were really crispy. My only complaint is that this place had no air conditioning and the heat from the heat wave was really getting to us. After eating such a heavy lunch and feeling extremely tired from the sun, we headed straight for our hotel to take a power nap. We woke up from our nap and around 6 p.m. the city cooled down a little bit. It was time for dinner and we wanted to grab something really quick and easy near our hotel. We decided to try shawarmas, which is a no-frills takeout restaurant that specializes in shawarma. Personally, I love chicken shawarma. I grew up in Mississauga where shawarma is pretty much an institution and I've had it many times over the years. I ordered the chicken shawarma on Saj and a Diet Coke. We went to a local park, Dorchester Square, which was right across the street. The city is actually filled with many aesthetic and artistic parks that are beautifully landscaped with tons of seating options. It really reminded me of the parks in New York City like Bryant Park. Anyways, back to the food. I thought it was absolutely amazing. Chicken was extremely tender and flavorful. The sauge was lightly toasted, so it had a really good crisp, and it was surprisingly flaky. Overall, a really solid place. For the evening, we visited McGill, one of Canada's most prestigious universities. 
My girlfriend went to school here, so she wanted to take a trip down memory lane. I've never actually been to McGill before, but I do like exploring different university campuses, usually because these campuses are pretty nice. Right behind campus is the entrance to the staircase that leads up to Mount Royale. Mount Royale is a huge hill in the middle of the city that comprises of hiking trails and multiple parks. It also has a great lookout point facing the downtown core which provides an amazing view. The hike up the staircase only takes around 15 to 20 minutes, but because the city was going through a heat wave, it did make things a lot more challenging. Once we did get to the top, we soaked in the views and took some pictures. I would try and catch you and then we would both fall together. When the sun went down, we decided to walk to Place de Festivals to check out the nighttime festivities. Surprisingly, Montreal was hosting a huge free jazz festival and thousands of people were headed over to watch the free show. There were so many colorful lights and art installations on the streets and it felt extremely lively. Unfortunately, we didn't get there early enough and couldn't see the stage, so after listening for a few minutes, we decided to head back to the hotel. But on our way back, the streets were packed with people and the city had really cool art installations all around. What's crazy is that all these festivities and all this energy within the city was happening on a regular weekday, which was amazing. The next morning, we got up really early to take the subway to Marche Jean Talon. This massive farmer's market is located near Little Italy and it offers a ton of fresh produce and food options through multiple stalls. As a tourist, it probably wasn't the most interesting thing we visited on the trip, but it was still really cool to check this place out. Since Marche Jean Talon was near Mile End, we wanted to check out Montreal's famous bagels. When it comes to bagels, there are only two shops in the conversation, saint Fiatur and Fairmount. First, we went to saint Fiatur, and I loved the fact that we could see the bagels being formed from the dough and being cooked in the oven. We bought one poppy seed bagel to share with cream cheese, and to be completely honest, the bagel was extremely solid, really tasty, but I didn't get the wow factor. I do eat my fair share of bagels in the morning, and the bagel itself is really good, but these bagels didn't really taste that different from the ones I would normally get from the supermarket. On our way to Fairmont, we decided to stop at a local cafe to grab another iced latte to deal with the extreme heat. The cafe was super cute and had a great patio for us to take a breather. After our morning coffee, we finally got to Fairmont Bagel. Unfortunately, the store wasn't designed to let you see how the bagels were made, but the place was packed with customers. We got the onion bagel with cream cheese, and I can conclusively say that onion bagels are tastier than poppy seed. But once again, I didn't get the wow factor. If I had to compare St. Fiatur and Fairmont, I would say that they are both pretty equal. Good solid bagels, but the next time I visit Montreal, I probably wouldn't go out of my way to visit them again. One place I was interested in trying was the $5 gnocchi at Conserve, which is right next to Fairmount. I've seen many TikToks about this place, and it always showed the restaurant with huge lines. We waited for 30 minutes on some benches right outside the restaurant, and we got the $5 gnocchi, which comes with cheese and red chili flakes on top. Right off the bat, the value is definitely there because there is a lot of pasta in that container. However, I did not like the taste at all. It tasted super oily and it didn't taste like tomato sauce in my opinion. It honestly felt like olive oil with just a hint of tomato. On the other hand, my girlfriend really liked it mostly because of the value, not the taste. We decided to continue the food tour and made our way back to La Plateau to visit Ma Poulet Mouillé. Fun fact, La Banquise is actually right across the street from this restaurant and I've been reading a bunch of reviews of how the quality of La Banquise was declining and has become a bit of a tourist trap, whereas Ma Poulet Mouillé is still very popular among the locals. When we went inside, we were immediately hit with the smell of rotisserie chicken. We got their poutine, which was topped with their famous rotisserie chicken and chorizo sausage. We knew this was going to be a really heavy meal, so we got one portion to share. Overall, I thought this poutine was really good, the chicken was really tender, and the chorizo had a lot of flavor. The only negative thing was that it was a bit on the salty side, and the place had no air conditioning at all, so it was really hot and humid inside the restaurant. After that gluttonous meal, we decided to just walk around the city and soak in some views. Montreal is filled with art installations, public parks, and really cute houses with unique architecture. We eventually made our way to Parc La Fontaine. This huge park in Le Plateau has a huge pond surrounded by benches to relax. We decided to rest here after our huge lunch. Next, we made our way back to Station Barry UCAM to soak in some of the local festivities. At Emily Glamin Place, we came across this free acrobatic performance. A block over, we played mini golf at this public art installation. And down the street, we found more music, public art, and lights. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, the city felt so alive and again, this was all happening during the weekday. For dinner, we headed to a taco restaurant called La Capital Tacos near Chinatown. We had really important plans that evening, so we just ordered takeout and ate at a public space nearby. The tacos were really tasty. I actually don't remember what I ordered from the restaurant and I didn't get any more footage because we didn't want to be late for our dinner plans. We took the subway to St. Helens Island to go to Six Flags La Ronde because we purchased tickets to the La Internationale des Feux Loto Quebec. This is an international firework festival hosted by the theme park where each week one country will put on a 30 minute firework show. Now the ticketing procedures for this event is a bit confusing. You need to purchase tickets to the theme park in order to view the fireworks up close. You can then purchase an additional ticket to get access to a special viewing area within the theme park to see the fireworks, which is what we initially purchased. This additional ticket puts you up close and center to the fireworks and the ticket gives you one alcoholic beverage and one snack. A lot of people, including ourselves, initially bought the tickets to the fireworks thinking we can get inside the theme park, but we were stopped at the entrance of the theme park because we didn't buy theme park tickets as well. This actually caused a lot of commotion at the gates and unhappy customers. Eventually, we bought theme park tickets on our phone so we can go inside and view the experience. The fireworks were absolutely amazing. I've never seen so many fireworks being fired simultaneously into the sky in my life. The fireworks were also synced with a playlist of songs which made the event even more fun. I have the full fireworks video on my channel so if you love fireworks as much as I do, there's a link in the description taking you there. After the fireworks show, we walked back to the subway station and checked out the biodome and its pretty lights. We also decided to walk to the edge of St. Ellen's Island in the direction facing the city to check out the city skyline. After that, we went home for some much needed rest for the next day. On day three, we decided to take things a bit slow and went to the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts in the morning. This is the largest art museum in Canada by gallery space, and it's filled with paintings, sculptures, and modern art. One tip for tourists is that the museum is actually comprised of two separate buildings across the street from each other. You can access the second building through the basement floor of the first building. For lunch, we visited a Korean fusion restaurant near Concordia University. I purchased a Korean fried chicken bowl, which came with fresh rice, fried chicken, cabbage, a runny egg, and a fried dumpling. After lunch, we took the subway to Pai Neuf to visit the Montreal Botanical Gardens. This massive garden has over 75 hectares of thematic gardens and greenhouses. My favorite was the Chinese garden because it was absolutely beautiful and super big. It has multiple Chinese style buildings, a huge pond, waterfall, and bridges. I was shocked at how big and serene the entire garden looked. After the Chinese garden, we continued our walk through the other garden exhibits and saw many different types of flowers and plants. Right next to the garden is a 1976 Olympic Stadium. We noted that there was a huge food festival going on and decided to check it out. Despite the festival's high energy and amazing smells, we decided to save our money for dinner and went to an Afghan restaurant in Le Plateau called Khyber Pass. Now although the food was good, this place was way overpriced in my opinion. We initially picked this place because the reviews were really positive and the ratings were really high, but we were actually shocked that the dinner was around $30 to $40 a person. Back in Mississauga, you can get a similar plate of food at an authentic Afghan restaurant for around $16 to $20, and we were expecting to pay a similar price range when we initially sat down in the restaurant. But overall, the food was still really good, which was nice. After dinner, we decided to call it a day and we headed back to the hotel for much more rest. For the final day in Montreal, we only had the morning left to explore the city because our flight was in the middle of the afternoon. We decided to visit St. Joseph's Oratory at Mount Royal. This is a Roman Catholic minor basilica located on the west side of the city. When we arrived, the church was actually undergoing some construction, so we had to take a shuttle bus from the main road up to the church. The inside of the cathedral itself didn't look as stunning as the Notre Dame Basilica, but at the top of the cathedral, you could get an amazing view of the city. After soaking in the views for a few minutes, we headed back to the airport and flew back to Toronto later that day. Overall, I think Montreal is an amazing city. Three and a half days was a good amount of time to get all of the touristy stuff done, and I was really glad we could experience some of the unique festivities in the city as well. The summer vibes definitely hit differently in Montreal than in Toronto, and I love the timeless European charm. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.